Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, speak to us from your word. Let there come fresh revelation. Let your reign of proceeding word come to us. That word that is proceeding forth from your mouth. We believe there's something fresh that you want to do. That there's a new thing that you're doing in our lives. There's a new thing that you're doing in the church and we look to you tonight Jesus and we put our faith in you tonight in Jesus name we pray Amen well the name of my message is Jerusalem 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 was the city of God. It was the place where God's presence dwelt. The name Jerusalem means the city of peace. It was often referred to as Zion, which means high place. God in his sovereignty choose to allow his presence to dwell in the city of Jerusalem. I was reading through the book of Joshua. He's listing off all of the different places that they conquered. Then there's One verse in Joshua 15, in Joshua 15 and verse 63 where it says that the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the people of Judah could not drive out. So the Jebusites dwell with the people of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. In Joshua 15 verse 63 Fiii lui Iuda n-au putut izgoni pe iebusiții care locuiau în Ierusalim și iebusiții au locuit cu fiul lui Iuda la Ierusalim până în această zi. So they were conquering city after city. Village after village. They were taking more and more ground. And then it gets to this point. Where it says that They couldn't drive out the Jebusites. They were the people who dwelled in the city of Jerusalem. They were an enemy that was more stubborn. They were an enemy that was harder for them. This was like a point of vulnerability. A, a place of weakness. And for many, many years, the Jebusites lived right in the midst of the Israelites. Until it came the days of King David. Până când s-a ajuns la zilele împăratului David. And probably the first thing that David did. Și probabil că primul lucru pe care David l-a făcut. When he became king over all of Israel. El a devenit împărat peste tot Israelul. Was he went to fight against the city of Jerusalem. A fost că s-a dus să lupte împotriva cetății Ierusalimului. It says in 2 Samuel. Se spune în 2 Samuel. Chapter 5. În capitolul 5. Verse 6 and 7. Versetele 6 și 7. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, You will not come in here, but the blind and the lame will ward you off, thinking David cannot come in here. Împăratul a mers cu oamenii lui asupra Ierusalimului, împotriva iebusiților, locuitorii țării. Ei au zis lui David spunând, Să nu intre aici, că și orbii și ologii ți se vor împotrivi. Prin aceasta voiau să spună că David nu va intra cu niciun chip aici. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. Dar David a pus mâna pe cetățuia Sionului. Aceasta este cetatea lui David. So, right after he was made king, imediat după ce a fost făcut împărat, he goes up to Jerusalem. Se duce în Ierusalim. And he wants to fight against the Jebusites. But the Jebusites were very rude. They were defiant. They, they said to him, 
I-au spus lui, you won't be able to come in here. Nu să poți să fii aici. Even the blind and the lame Chiar și orbi și will be able to keep you out. Și se vor putea like those who are the weakest from us cei mai slab noi will be able to keep you out of the city. Putea să te țină pe tine de de oraș. They had been staying there so long au în așa de mult timp that they thought that they could not be defeated. And of course, this just made David want to go and fight even more. So he told his men, to go in through the water system, and by doing so, he conquered the city. The stronghold of Zion. And it became known as the city of David. He chose to rule from Jerusalem. Even though he could have ruled from anywhere that he wanted to. If you look back in the law of Moses, especially in the book of Deuteronomy, It says again and again. Se spune din nou și din nou. We don't even have enough time. Nici măcar nu avem suficient timp. To look at all of the different occasions when it said. Să ne uităm la cât de multe ori s-a spus de fapt. That there will be a place. Că va fi un loc. That the Lord your God. Pe care Domnul Dumnezeul vostru. Will choose. Îl va alege. To put his name. Peste care să-și pună numele. Moses spoke about this special city. Moise a vorbit despre acel oraș special. That God would establish His name in. Unde Dumnezeu urma să stabilească numele lui. And the people of Israel. Și poporul evreu. Would have to go to that place. Trebuie să meargă în acel loc. To worship. Să se închine. To bring their sacrifices. Să aducă jertfele lor. Three times. De trei ori. Every single year. În fiecare an. When they had their most important festivals. Când erau sărbătorile lor cele mai importante. They would have to go to that place. Ei trebuiau să meargă în acel loc. That The Lord, their God, would choose to put His name. Prophetically, Moses was speaking about Jerusalem. I think it's so interesting that God didn't tell them where the place was going to be. Like it's going to be a surprise. And hundreds and hundreds of years would go by before God chose the place where He would put His name. But we are told in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 6 I have chosen Jerusalem that my name may be there. Ce am ales Ierusalimul pentru ca în el să fie numele meu. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Și am ales pe David ca să domnească peste poporul meu Israel. God tells us ne spune what was the place that he chose care a fost locul pe care el a ales that his name would be there. Pe care să fie pus numele lui. And when we say his name was put there, that means that there was the revealing of who God is in that place. Cine este Dumnezeu în acel loc? That his glory was manifested in that place. Gloria lui se manifesta în acel loc. That his presence was seen in that place. Era văzută în acel loc. And God says the place that I have chosen. Și Dumnezeu a spus locul pe care l-am ales. Is Jerusalem. Este Ierusalim. And I have chosen David. Și am ales pe David to rule over my people Israel. Israel. How God chooses Cum alege Dumnezeu, none of us can completely understand. It comes from His mind, că vine din mintea lui, from His wisdom, din from lui, His understanding, din lui. from all of eternity, din there is the choice of este God. Lui But He chose a city, a ales un oraș, Jerusalem, where his name would rest. Lui urma să se he chose a king, a ales un împărat, David, pe David, to rule his people. Să lui. In Psalm 132, In Psalm 132, in verse 13 and 14, în 13 și 14, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it 
for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Căci Domnul a ales Ionul, l-a dorit ca locuința sa. Acesta este locul meu de odihnă pe vecie. Aici voi locui, căci l-am dorit. The Lord said, spune, I have chosen Zion. I have desired it. That it would be the place where I dwell. That it would be like my house. Fie casa mea. The place where my presence Locul is. De mea se He said, for all time, El a zis, tot this will be my resting place. Acesta va fi locul meu de odihnă pe vecie. For all of eternity, he has chosen Zion. He has chosen Jerusalem. So my question for you is, was it God's choice or was it David's choice? Probably the correct answer is, it was both. Jerusalem was the city of David. It was the place he wanted to live. The place where he wanted to rule from. And when God saw David's choice, God said, yeah, I like Jerusalem too. David, if you're going to live there, David, then I want to live there too. But actually, probably the reason that David chose Jerusalem was because God had already chosen it way in advance. He already knew the place. Why was there such battles regarding Jerusalem? It's because in God's eyes it was very valuable. It was very precious. It was very important. It was the place of high ground. Even the, the name Zion it means a high place. And the high places in the spirit, oftentimes there can be great battles for them. The important things in your life, those are the things that there can be the greatest battles for. Maybe things concerning your family, regarding your children, or whatever it might be. The really important things are the things that you experience often the greatest battles for. It was God's choice. And it was also David's choice. We can see in this the co-partnership that there Acel is co ce between God and man. Și om. God created all of the animals. A creat toate and then he says to Adam, spune lui Adam name them. Un nume. <laughs> Couldn't God just name them all himself? Fi putut, oare să dea ele un nume? But he comes to Adam, Dar el vine la Adam and he says, you give them this. Adam says, Adam zice, this is a giraffe. Este And God says, spune, that is an incredible name. E un nume It fits this animal It perfectly. Perfect animal. Then there comes another one. Vine un altul. And Adam says, Adam zice, that looks like a hippopotamus. Arată ca și un hipopotam. And God says, There couldn't have been picked a more fitting name. Nu ar fi putut să fie ales un nume mai potrivit. And on and on all the animals come. Și tot așa mai departe toate animalele au venit. God created them. Dumnezeu le-a creat. But man had to give them names. Omul a trebuit să le dea un nume. God 
wants to include mankind in all of his work in toată lucrarea lui in everything that he în does tot ceea ce el face in his plans în planurile lui in his purposes în scopurile lui could he do it all by himself ar putea el să le facă pe toate de unul singur of course he could absolut da but he usually chooses not to dar de obicei alege să nu le facă de unul singur because That's how much he loves us. And that's how much he cares for us. We'll see later on that even the heavenly city is called Jerusalem. So was it called that before or after? David decided that this was going to be the place where he lived. I don't know. That's above my pay grade. Um, uh, but uh, it's an interesting thing to think about. If you lived in Jerusalem, those times of the year, în acele timpuri din an, and they would have their festivals. Când erau sărbătorile lor. And the Jewish people would come by their thousands. Și poporul evreu se aduna acolo cu miile. The law said that every single person. Legea spunea că fiecare om. Man, woman and child. Bărbat, femeie și copil. Had to appear before the Lord. Trebuia să se arate înaintea Domnului. In Jerusalem. În Ierusalim. In, in that place where God would put his loc name. unde Domnul și-a pus numele. The pilgrims who would come Pelegrinii care veneau would have to climb up to Jerusalem. Trebuiau să urce până la Ierusalim. And as they came, și așa cum ei urcau înspre Ierusalim, they would sing their songs. Ei cântau cântecele lor. They were known as the songs of ascent. Erau numite cântecele ascensiunii. They are the psalms from chapter 120 to 134. Psalm de la 120 până la 134. Uh, you can see the beginning of each of them. It says a song of ascent. Și poți să vezi că la fiecare scrie o cântare a treptelor. There were the songs that people would sing. Cântece pe care oamenii le cântau. As they were climbing up towards Jerusalem. Așa cum urcau înspre Ierusalim. To to celebrate. Să sărbătorească. Those different festivals. Aceste sărbători. One example. Un exemplu. Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Verse 1 and 2. Versetele 1 și 2. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. M-am bucurat când mi-au zis să mergem la casa Domnului. Our feet will stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. Picioarele noastre stau în porțile tale, Ierusalime. And he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Și pe zice, rugați-vă pentru pacea Ierusalimului. Peace, peace be unto you. Pace, pace ție. So these were the songs that they were singing as they were climbing. Sunt cântece, psalmi pe care îi cântau așa cum urcau. Could you imagine if you were living in Jerusalem? Poți să-ți imaginezi dacă tu ai fi locuit în Ierusalim? For days you would just hear Zile songs. Zile tu auzai numai cântece. Melodies. Melodii. Harmonies of the pilgrims coming together. This beautiful sound. Is there no wonder that people love Jerusalem so much? That they had such a heart for Jerusalem. I want us to look at The history of the Ark of the Covenant. And how the Ark of the Covenant came to Jerusalem. Because for the people of Israel, they associated the Ark of the Covenant with the presence of God. If they saw the Ark of the Covenant, they knew that God was present. If the ark wasn't there, then they thought that God's presence wasn't there. His manifest presence. The ark was a box of gopher wood. So the ark was made a box made of wood. 
uh, it was a box. It was, o cutie făcută din lemn. And, and it had like uh, two angels that were on top of it. Și erau doi îngeri deasupra. They were cherubim. Erau heruvim. Who were facing one another. Care se uitau unul la celălalt. And it was completely covered with gold. Și era complet acoperit cu aur. The priests would have to carry the Ark of the Covenant. They had two long poles. Uh, and they, they carried it by, by holding on to those poles. So the, the lid that was on the Ark of the Covenant with the two cherubim facing each other it was referred to as the mercy seat. And the Jewish people believed that God himself was seated upon that place. That it was his throne. And his glory, his Shekinah, would appear above the Ark of the Covenant. It was kept in the Holy of Holies. Inside of the Ark, we are told that they kept three things. There was a golden pot that had manna in it. Era un vas de aur care avea mană în el. There was Aaron's rod that budded. Era toiagul lui Aaron care mugurise și înflorise. And there was the tablets of the covenant. Și era tablele de piatră cu poruncile. The, the, the Ten Commandments were written on. Cele porunci scrise pe ele. As time went on, timpul, the only thing that remained in the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments. The Israelites would bring the Ark of the Covenant with them wherever they went throughout the wilderness. If they were going to begin to move forward, Dacă ei începeau să se miște, they were going, getting ready to go into a new place, Dacă se pregăteau să meargă într-un loc nou, then they would begin to say, începeau să spună, Arise, O Lord, ridică-te, O Doamne, and let your enemies be scattered before you. Te să se risipească dinaintea feței tale. And let those who hate you și ceea ce te urăsc, flee from before you. Să fugă dinaintea ta. We are told se spune that Moses would go in. Că Moise se ducea and the Lord told him, și a spus, I will meet with you mă voi întâlni cu tine from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, cei doi heruvim, from over the ark of the testimony. And I'll speak with you about all that I will command you regarding the Israelites. When Moses would go into the tent of meeting, he would speak with the Lord. He would speak hear this voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the Ark of the Covenant from between the two cherubim he would speak to him. So this was how Moses would meet with God. This is how he would experience God's presence. Wherever the ark was brought, a fost adus chivotul, the people were led by the cloud. Era de acel nor, They were led by the pillar of fire. De acel stil de foc, Their enemies were defeated before them lor erau lor, because God's presence was with them. Era cu ei. And His presence și lui would give them the victory. Le When the Israelites entered into the promised land, do you know what happened with the Ark of the Covenant? We are told in Joshua 18, in verse 1, that the whole congregation of the people of Israel assembled at Shiloh and they set up the tent of the meeting there. 
Toată adunarea filor lui Israel s-a strâns la Shilo și a așezat acolo cortul întâlnirii. So it says that all of Israel came together. tot Israelul a venit împreună. And they set up the tent of meeting. Și au așezat cortul întâlnirii. Which of course had the ark of the covenant. In so for many years, whenever the people would want to go and bring a sacrifice, whenever they would want to go to worship, when they would want to go and celebrate one of the festivals, they would go to Shiloh. But that was just a temporary place where God chose to allow His presence to stay. It's interesting that Shiloh means peace. And of course, Jerusalem means the city of peace. But where God's presence is, there is always peace. His presence brings peace to us. And where there's peace, God's kind of peace, then there will come His presence as well. We know about how little Samuel, he heard the voice of God calling to him from the Ark of the Covenant, calling his name. Samuel, 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 Samuel. God had spoken to Moses, but now he would speak to Samuel, Samuel in the same way, mod, calling him by name. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. It says in 1 Samuel, chapter 3, 3 verse 21, 21, And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Și Domnul continua să se arate în Shiloh, căci Domnul se descoperea lui Samuel în Shiloh prin cuvântul Domnului. So it says that God again began to allow his presence to appear in Shiloh. Spune că din nou Domnul s-a arătat, prezența lui s-a descoperit în Shiloh. And that the Lord continued to reveal himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord. Then we know about how Eli, the high priest, had two sons who were very wicked, Hophni and Phinehas. And how The people of Israel went up in battle against the Philistines. How they had the great idea. Let's bring the Ark of the Covenant with us. Because they thought that they for sure would be able to defeat the Philistines. But because of their sin, because of how they had gone away from the Lord, the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant. And I won't go into everything that happened when the Ark of the Covenant was in the land of the Philistines. But we know that it stayed there for about seven months. And finally, the Philistines said, let's send it back to the Jewish people. So when they sent it back, they brought it first to a certain place where some people had disrespect for the Ark of the Covenant and they tried to look inside and it said 70 men were killed at that time. So then they said, let's be careful. Let's have respect and reverence for the Ark of the Covenant. And in 1 Samuel 7, verse 1 and 2, And the men of Kiriath Jerim came and took up the Ark of the Lord and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill, and they consecrated his son Eliezer to have charge of the Ark of the Lord. 
Bărbații din Chiriat Iarim au venit și au suit chivotul Domnului. L-au dus în casa lui Abinadab, pe deal, și au sfințit pe fiul său Eleazar ca să păzească chivotul Domnului. From the day that the ark was lodged at Kiriath Jerim, a long time passed, some 20 years, and all of the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Trecuse mult timp din ziua când chivotul fusese pus în Kiriath Jerim, trecuse ră 20 de ani. Atunci toată casa lui Israel a plâns după Domnul. So they, they brought up the ark. Așa că i-a duc chivotul. They brought it into the house of a man by the name of Abinadab. În casa unui om cu numele de Abinadab. And They, it stayed there for about 20 years. And it says that all of Israel was mourning for the Ark of the Covenant. They were all mourning for the presence of God. There was a longing. There was a feeling like something was lacking. When, you, when God's presence is not in your life, it leaves like a void. It, it's like a, a vacuum left there. But after 20 years, David says, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. The first time, dată, when they tried to bring the ark back, să chivotul, they put it on a cart, l-au pus pe un car, being led by some oxen. Care a fost dus de niște boi. Remember what I said? Ce am spus? According to the law, După lege, the ark of the covenant had to be carried by priests preuți, that they would hold on to the poles. But When they first tried bringing the ark back, they didn't do it the right way. And the oxen, while they were walking along, stumbled. And the ark started to shake some. There was a man standing by by the name of Uza. And he stretched out his hand. And when he did so, și când a făcut acest lucru, he dropped dead. A căzut mort. When that happened, când s-a întâmplat acest lucru, David was very scared. David a fost a temut. He said, "Let's not bring the ark back to Jerusalem." Și a zis, nu ducem înapoi în Ierusalim chivotul. And he sent the ark to the house of another man. Și a trimis chivotul în casa unui alt om. By the name of Obed Edom. Cu numele de Obed Edom. And it says that the ark stayed there for about three months. And God so blessed Abedadam and all of his household so that when David saw how much they were blessed, he thought to himself, if God blessed One house where his presence was. And how much more will he bless a whole city? How much more will he bless a whole nation with his presence? So then a second attempt was made to bring back the ark. And this time They had the priests carry the ark. And they brought sacrifices to the Lord. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He was basically just in his underwear. But he didn't care who saw him. His wife, Michael, who is the daughter of Saul, was judging him. She was criticizing him. She said, the king looked like a fool today. And David said, I'll look even more foolish than this. He, he had such a love for God's presence. That he wanted to bring the presence of God into his city. And it says in 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 17. 
And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. Și spune versetul 17, după ce au adus chivotul Domnului, l-au pus la locul lui, în mijlocul cortului pe care David îl ridicase pentru chivot. Și David a adus înaintea Domnului arder de tot și jertfe de mulțumire. David, had set up a tent. David a pregătit un cort. It was the tabernacle of David. Era cortul lui David. On Mount Zion. Pe muntele Sionului. It was a very special place. Era un loc foarte special. Where the Levites would sing to the Lord day and night. Where they would bring sacrifices to the Lord. It was a place of God's manifest presence. It's a place where God's glory was seen. Later on, when Solomon would build the temple, You can read the story for yourself. Puteți să citiți voi ce s-a întâmplat acolo. In 1 Kings. În 1 Împărați. Chapter 8. În capitolul 8. From verse 1 to 11. De la versetele 1 până la 11. It says that all of Israel gathered together. Tot Israelul s-a adunat. To bring the ark of the covenant into the temple. Să ducă chivotul legământului în templu. They brought so many animal sacrifices that they could not be numbered. And after they brought the ark into the temple, the glory of God filled the temple like a cloud. So much so that the priests could not go in to do their ministry. Because the glory of God had come. You see, it's a pretty complex history of how the Ark of the Covenant went from the wilderness to Shiloh, then into the land of the Philistines, then back into a house, Then to another house. Then finally into the tent of David. And into the temple of Solomon. What happened to it after that? It doesn't specifically tell us this. But according to history, the ark was probably taken by the Babylonians in the year 587 B.C. Before that, it was just being kept in storage in the temple. That's how little it had come to value for the people of Israel. How far their hearts had gone away from God. We don't know exactly where it ended up. But Jeremiah prophesied. Jeremiah chapter 3. In verse 16 and 17. And when you have multiplied and been fruitful in the land, in those days, declares the Lord, they will say no more. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will not come to mind or be remembered or missed. It will not be made again. Când vă veți înmulți și veți fi rotnici în țară, în zilele acelea, zice Domnul, nu se va mai vorbi de chivotul legământului Domnului și nu va mai veni nimănui în gând, nu își vor mai aduce aminte de el, nu îi vor mai simți lipsa și nici nu îl vor mai face altul. At that time, Jerusalem will be called the throne of the Lord. And all nations will gather to it, to the presence of the Lord in Jerusalem. And they will no more stubbornly follow their own evil heart. În timpul acela, Ierusalimul se va numi scaunul de domnie al Domnului. Toate popoarele se vor strânge la Ierusalim pentru numele Domnului și nu vor mai urma înclinarea încăpățânată a inimii lor rele. Jeremiah said, when you have multiplied, when you have been fruitful in the land, 
In those days, în acele zile, you won't even remember the Ark of the Covenant. It won't come to your mind. You won't miss it. You won't have to make it again. Because God's not going to appear over the cherubim. Over the ark. Over the mercy seat. But all of Jerusalem. Will be called the throne of God. And the presence of the Lord that's in Jerusalem. Will cause all nations. To be gathered to it tells us in the book of Revelation that at one moment the gates of the th- temple were opened. And John looked in and he saw the Ark of the Covenant inside. But later on he would say in heaven There is no temple. Nu este templu. Because God himself. Pentru că Dumnezeu însuși. And the lamb. Și mielul lui. They are the temple. Ei sunt templul. Of heaven. Cerului. Jerusalem. Ierusalimul. The place of God's presence. Locul prezenței lui Dumnezeu. The place where his throne is. Locul unde scaunul lui de domnie este. The nations gather to the presence of God. They are drawn by His glory. I hope you realize that actually Jerusalem, the city of God, Mount Zion, is a picture of the church. We are Jerusalem. We are the place where the manifest presence of God, the glory of God dwells continuously. We are the place that God has chosen to allow His name to dwell upon. We are the city of God. We are the place that God says, My name will dwell there. And just like the Jewish people, they would gather together, celebrating, singing their songs, coming together in unity, in love, In the city of Jerusalem. That's a picture of the church. What happens when we gather together in the name of Jesus where even two or three, three of us gather together in His name that He is there in El our este midst. Acolo, în His presence comes. Lui vine. His glory is seen. In the same way that the Ark of the Covenant was brought into Jerusalem, God wants His presence to continually be in the church. When the Lord Jesus Himself would enter into Jerusalem, Riding on a donkey. The people would sing. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They would cut palm branches. And they'd wave them before him. They would take their coats. And they would lay them down upon the road. He went all through the city of Jerusalem. Till he went into the temple. And when he went into there, he began to drive out those who were buying and selling. He said to them, My house will be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of robbers. 
He said, God said, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it to be something less. You have made it a den of thieves. Jesus would also weep over Jerusalem. Say, oh Jerusalem. 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 The city that kills the prophets. Stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children. Together. As a hen gathers. Her brood under her wings. But you were not willing. Again, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city of God, the, the place of His presence, they had made it something much less than, than God had intended it to be. They had made it a place where prophets were killed, where those who were sent to it were killed with stones. And sadly, trist, even today, astăzi, the church can become much less than what God originally intended it to be. Just like the temple, templul, just like Jerusalem, so the church can become less poate să devină mai puțin than what God intended it to be. A vrut ca ea să fie. But the church Dar is supposed to be este, să fie the place of God's presence, lui the place of God's glory, Locul lui the place where God himself dwells. Se In Hebrews chapter 12, Evrei, 12 let's open up there together. Verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering. Ci v-ați apropiat de muntele Sionului și de cetatea Dumnezeului celui viu, Ierusalimul ceresc, de zecile de mii de îngeri. And to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. De adunarea în sărbătoare și de biserica celor întâi născuți, care sunt scriși în ceruri, de Dumnezeu, judecătorul tuturor, de duhurile celor trei făcuți de săvârșiți. This is a really incredible passage. Este un pasaj incredibil. Hebrews 12. But it says that you, voi, the New Testament people of God, Dumnezeu, have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. It's not talking nu about a geographic city, about a place that you can find earthly speaking. Because Jesus himself said neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem will people worship. It's talking here about the church, the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. That's what we have come to. La asta, de aceasta ne-am apropiat noi. This is the church. Aceasta este biserica. This is the place. Este locul. Where God's manifest presence. Unde prezența manifestată a lui Dumnezeu. Where the glory of unde God. gloria lui Dumnezeu. Dwells. Se odihnește. It's in the body of Christ. Este în trupul lui Hristos. It's in us. Este în noi. In Revelation 21. În Apocalipsa 21. We're looking here at what happens at the end. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and the sea was no more. Apoi am văzut un cer nou și un pământ nou pentru că cerul din tâi și pământul din tâi trecuseră și marea nu mai este. And I saw the holy city 
New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. Și a văzut coborându-se din cer de la Dumnezeu, cetatea sfântă, noul Ierusalim, gătită ca o mireasă împodobită pentru soțul ei. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place or the tabernacle of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. Și am auzit un glas tare care venea din cer zicând, Iată, cortul lui Dumnezeu este cu oamenii. El va locui cu ei și ei vor fi poporul lui și Dumnezeu însuși va fi cu ei, Dumnezeul lor. Says John sees the new heaven and the new earth that God will make. Ioan vede cerul nou, pământul nou pe care Dumnezeu l-a creat. He sees the holy city. El vede cetatea sfântă. New Jerusalem. Noul Ierusalim. We're not citizens of the earthly Jerusalem. Noi nu suntem cetățeni ai Ierusalimului pământesc. We are citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem. Noi suntem cetățeni ai Ierusalimului ceresc. He saw it coming down out of heaven. Și l-a văzut cum s-a coborât din ceruri. Prepared as a bride. Pregătit precum o mireasă. Is prepared for her husband. Pregătită pentru soțul ei. This is the church. Este biserica. Bride without spot or wrinkle. O mireasă fără pată sau zbărcitură. Then he hears a loud voice. Și aude un glas tare. This is one of the greatest declarations in all of Scripture. Și este una dintre declarațiile cele mai mari din Scriptură. Behold! Iată! The dwelling place cortul, where the, the tabernacle of God is with man. Cortul lui Dumnezeu este cu oamenii. He will dwell with them. El va locui cu ei. And they will be His people. Și ei vor fi poporul lui. And God Himself will be their God. Și Dumnezeu însuși va fi cu ei, Dumnezeul lor. And God said, forever and ever. Dumnezeu a spus, o veșnicie. His presence will be with us. His presence will be with the church. We, the people of God. This is the city of God. We are the city of God. We are the people of God. We are the place where His presence rests. When we come together, whether it's on Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, or any other day, what a special thing it is. What what meaning there is when we gather together as the assembly the, the people of God and there are people from China people from Russia people from Romania people from Kenya people from Canada, from the USA, from all different nations, gathering together to lift up the name of Jesus. That God dwells among us. God moves among us. That we are His people. And He is our God. And He has chosen for His manifest presence, His glory to dwell among us. The people of God. So that's why I can say we are the Jerusalem of God. We are the place of His manifest presence. We are the place where His glory is seen and experienced. In the last days, God said, the nations will stream up the City of God. We are that city. We are that place. We are that place. And nations are drawn to the glory that is seen upon us as the people of God. Amen. Amen. Interesting that one of the first preachings of the early church was one of the first preachings of the early church. Used a prophecy. Ce spune că Dumnezeu în zilele de pe urmă. Saying that in the last days God. Va restaura iarăși cortul lui David. 
will restore the fallen tent of David. Cortul lui David nu a arătat ca și cortul lui Moise. The tent of David didn't look like the tent of Moses. Nu erau separate camerele. It didn't have separate rooms. Acolo era chivotul legământului. It just had the ark of the covenant. Erau cântăreții. There is those who were singing. Unii cântau, ceilalți răspundeau. Those who were singing, others who were responding. They were prophesying on instruments. They were prophesying with their voices. In the time of their singing, everyone had access to the presence of God, to the Ark of the Covenant. David, gândiți-vă că a învățat întreg poporul. Think that David taught the whole people. Laudă și închinare. Praise and worship. Cum se cânte lui Dumnezeu? How to sing to God? Și în mijlocul laudelor și cântecelor lor. In the midst of their praise and their songs. Se auzea cânt cântec profetic. They could hear the prophetic songs. Spune despre fiul lui Asaf cum prorocau pe instrumente. It says how even the sons of Asaph prophesied on their instruments. La flaute, la lire. Upon the flutes, upon the lyre. Cum cântau ei Domnului. As they were singing to the Lord. Asta e ce Domnul restaurează acum. This is what God is restoring in our days. E normal să auzim cântece profetice. It's normal for us to hear prophetic songs. E normal să auzim cuvinte profetice. It's normal for us to hear prophetic words. Pentru că Domnul restaurează cortul lui David. The Lord is restoring the fallen tent of David. Și chivotul lui. And his Ark e prezența lui. Is his manifestată manifest aici între noi. Among us. În mijlocul nostru. In our midst. Fie ca Domnul să pună o foame mare în acest timp. May the Lord put great hunger in this time. prezența lui. For his presence in us. Să nu lăsăm chivotul într-un depozit. Let's not allow the ark to be left somewhere in in a storage. Să nu facem din casa lui o peșteră unde tâlharii se adună. Let's not make from his house a place that's a den of thieves. But let's it, let it be a place where we all gather together to lift him up, to minister to him, to see him lifted up. Amen. Amen.